Hey everyone, it is Chris. First off, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for the amazing response to my last video where I asked people to help me get to a thousand by my birthday and uh, by the end of that that night or the next night we had already passed a thousand so thank you so much and uh, I really appreciate it and I don't know let's get to 10,000 and I'll shave my head and or my beard or something you know if there's something you would like me to do at 10,000 and you would be willing to help me get to that number you let me know because uh, that would be awesome okay this is my top five for episode seven of The Expanse, season three. Coming in at number five are Time Jumps and The Ring. I find it interesting that they chose to jump the show ahead like this, given some important events happen, like, you know, Christian now being the leader of Earth and uh, Naomi going back to the OPA, as well as the legal troubles, quote unquote, of the crew of the Rossi. I, I found myself a bit at odds with the first couple of minutes uh, with the storyline because of so much being passed over without even an attempt at explanation. The show has done a great job so far, in my opinion, with not rushing too quickly past important moments, so it was a bit jarring to experience it here you know, in the middle of a season like this. With that being said, I really liked the way they had Christian narrate the forming of the ring, uh, giving it an air of gravity, you know, gravitas, if you will, uh, that it really needs, given how foundational it is to the story from this point on. Coming in at number four is Captain Drummer. Oh, I loved this, and it is a drastic change from the novels. I mean, basically, everything on the behemoth from a character standpoint, is different from the novels. Uh, the command crew of the behemoth was almost completely different, uh, which was important for the books, but less so, I think, for the show, honestly. If the writers want to have the story follow the same trajectory, I think they can, with a subtle tweak or two, uh, given how they have set up the dynamics currently. With all that being said, I really like seeing Drummer in this role. The tension between uh, who Belters are their identity as a people, if you will, and who they must become is going to be great to watch. I'm not sure how I feel about Naomi being on the ship, though. Speaking of Naomi, number three is Chief Naomi. <laughs> this is a drastic, drastic change from the novels, and one that erases my favorite character from the book. This storyline is lifted from... Carlos Bull Baca, uh, the chief of security for the ship, placed there by Fred Johnson in the novels. It is already apparent from this episode that Naomi will be filling the role of Bull in the show, uh, and that really rubs me the wrong way, I'm not going to lie. It also complicates other bits of the story coming if they don't do some serious rewriting and shuffling. And just on a personal note, I hate, hate, hate the writing trope where you can't have the romantic leads together long. So yeah, something always happens to preserve the tension without paying it off until the last minute. I loved how the authors didn't do that in the book, and it is seriously irritating. They're doing it now in the show. Anyway, back to the episode. Uh, the relationship between Naomi and Drummer is really interesting, and I can see where they are going with the characters currently in command of the ship. Watching how Ashford attempts to influence Naomi to in turn convince Drummer to do what he wants will be fun. Coming in at number two, the slow zone. So yeah, I knew this was coming. Once we got uh, to the introduction of the slingshotter, it was only a matter of uh, waiting and seeing how they would handle it. Uh, this becomes a significant plot point in this story and in the next novel, so it was great to see it introduced so well. The slow zone serves many purposes, uh, but the one that I love most is that it serves to reinforce how advanced the aliens are who created the proto-molecule. We have already seen glimpses into it from the molecule itself to how it seemed to be able to bend the laws of physics with Eros. They will hopefully get into what exactly is happening in the next episode, but if not, I'll fill you in on the science in my next review. Needless to say, it's, uh, it's freaking cool. And last but not certainly least, Doors and Corners. 
And my favorite plot point from this novel has finally been revealed. Well, it's just great to have Thomas Jane back on the show in any way we can get. This new version of Detective Miller is so amazing. It, it becomes clearer and clearer as time goes on, but his relationship with the protomolecule is complicated, eerie, and strange. If they stick to the novels when it comes to his relationship to Holden, it will be even better. Uh, this moment really begins the most interesting sci-fi heavy part of the Expanse universe, which I'm sure seems like an impossible thing to say given how great it has been so far, but trust me, what you have seen thus far is the appetizer course. The main course is about to begin, and uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I will say I really miss the um, the harbinger, if you will, of, of Detective Miller's presence uh, that they had in the novels, which was blue firefly kind of things. It was just a really great gag to have going on, especially because Holden comes to just get irritated anytime he sees them and the way he interacts with them is really hilarious. So I'm hoping they have it in the show and they just chose not to, to show it yet. But uh, if not, I'm going to miss that little... Susan, if you will, of a plot from the novels. That is it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you thought it was good. Give it a thumbs down if you thought it wasn't. I won't take it personally. And subscribe if you aren't. I haven't really said this in, uh, a lot, but you can follow me on Twitter if you want to ask questions or I might do live Q&As and stuff eventually if that's something people want. So uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Chris J. Davis. I will have the links in the description and possibly on the screen somewhere right now. Uh, you can also find me in the Expanse, Every, uh, Everything Expanse, I think is what it's called, Facebook group. I will link it in the description as well. It's an amazing group and it's, it's the one that helped... Uh, save the show. They organized a lot. Uh, crew members from the show were in there. And uh, it's an amazing, amazing group of people that uh, really love the show and uh, broke their back, if you will, to make sure it got renewed. So you can find me in there with all of those crazy yahoos. And I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>